This video is for Null Pistol, who asked about tying two ropes under tension. Grab my loop down below. I'll bring it up and I'll thread it once, thread it twice. Then I'll tie in a half hitch and pull it tight. We're using a 20 pound weight to create our tension. Now I'm gonna use a bowline and sheep end to create a two point harness. How about 36 inches of rope there? I'll turn in my overhand loop and then I'll take my bitter end and I'll go out of the rabbit hole, around the tree and back down. And I wanna make sure I leave enough length here so that I can tie in that sheep end. Okay, so here I go. I'm gonna go around the handle once, around the handle twice, create my loop here. I'll go through, around, and then back through this window here. And that's your classic sheep end. And now, I just need to tighten everything up and I have my two point harness to create my tension. So here's our weight down below. I'm using this pull up bar as my upper anchor point. And while we're talking about tying knots under tension, let's go back over how to tie a bowline under tension. So what I'm gonna do is go over my standing end and pull an overhand knot. There we go. And I need to invert this. So I'm gonna pull up on my tension side, down on my free end and invert the knot. There we go. Now what I need to do is go around the back. I'm gonna go from right to left through this upper window here. Okay. And now I need to sneak into this loop here where the rabbit comes in and out of. So I'm just gonna pull it through that back window. I'll pull it down and this is gonna lock in my bowline. And there we go. Got my perfect bowline there. This is only gonna work if you hold your rope properly. I'm gonna make sure that the tension side is on the inside of my grip and the loop that I create is on the outside. Then when I lift this up, I'm gonna take my upper rope, thread it through, just like I'm threading a needle from front to back. I'll stay on the right hand side and thread it through one more time. Watch this. Once, stay to the right, twice. Okay, this loop that I have here, I wanna work it to the left and watch what happens. There we go, got it on that second try. Now you can see I can let go of my bitter end here up top, but my connection is still maintained. If I were to let this go, it all falls apart. So let's do that one more time and not let go. Here we go, once, twice, okay. Now when I let go, this portion of the rope came free. Now what if I only had something to hold it together? You guessed it this part of the rope. So instead of going with the curve of the loop, I'm gonna go against it and just do an overhand knot over everything. Pull it tight, there we go. And now our line is together under tension. I'll bring up my weight and I'll thread it through once and twice. Here we go. All right. Now, if I were to let go of this, it would all fall apart. If only I had something to keep it all together, right? That is going to be this free end here or bitter end. Now, instead of going along with the curve of the knot that's already in place, I'm going to break that curve and go the opposite way and simply tie in an overhand knot. Pull that tight and there we go. Our line is tied under tension. Now, if you look closely here, you'll see that this is actually a version of a sheep end. The only difference is up top in the loop of the sheep end, I incorporated a black wall hitch. Another option is you can make this slipped. There we go. Now the only problem with this one is it's not as secure. It will tighten up on itself, but if you wanna have a little tab that you can pull on to release everything, then you can use that. You can see it's already slipping through. Let's hopefully we can tighten it up. There we go. Now when I want to pull this free, I'll simply grab onto this end and yank my loop through. Now if you're worried about losing too much length in your rope, for example, I had a kite surfer who wanted to know what knot to use if one of his lines snapped, I would just go with a simple sheep end. You make a loop on your left-hand side, go through, around, and then I'll create a little window right there, and I'll poke this end through. 
Now this, in my opinion, is the best knot you can use for the shortest amount of line possible. I've also used this with my boogie board when the little plastic tie comes off of the board and you don't know what knot to use, this is it. This is well suited to hold a lot of weight. Now let me dump the 20 pounds down. Maybe it's not that well suited. Now if you're expecting a shock load on this, you want to make sure that it's as tight as you can get it because it will slip if you don't have this thing well secured. And here I'm going to dump my 20 pound weight. There we go. It held tight. Now remember when I said that grip was important and I had the tension side on the inside of my grip and the loop on the outside? Well, if I do it the opposite way, watch what happens. I'm going to take my rope and I'll thread it through once and twice. Okay. And when I go over here, if I tie my rope around, Watch how it slips out. Here we go, I'm gonna tie, tighten that as much as I can. Did you see how it just kind of fell apart? Now, it did tighten up, but you don't wanna leave any chances. So let me show you what happened here. When I let this weight hang free, the rope tightens up and it basically creates a rigid structure. By folding my rope to the right, the rigid structure stays on the left-hand side and that is what's going to be held onto by our upper rope. So here we go, I'll go once twice. There you go. You can see the rope is tight on the left hand side so it has something to grip onto as far as the structure of the rope. If I do it the opposite way and I put the rope on the inside and I do the same threading pattern once, twice. There we go. The tension is on the right hand side now. And when I let it go there's no structure for it to bite onto. And so everything just falls apart. Now remember when we tied our half hitch to secure everything, I could have gone the same direction of my original turn there. But watch if I were to do that, what happens is it creates an easier path for the rope to slip through. Okay, so I'll try to tighten it up as best I can when I let go, as I pull on this, it releases just a little bit, right? And that's why I go against the curve. Okay, again, let me flip this around so that you can see. If I went with the curve, I would go like this and then back through that window for my half hitch. But I wanna go against the curve. And that makes it just a little bit harder for the rope to find a path to slip. If you're thinking, hey, wait a minute, only one of those lines is under tension, I would challenge you to try the same setup and use the knot that you would use to tie your shoes. You'll see that as soon as you connect the ropes, both lines quickly come under tension.